What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV, and in today's video, I'm going to give you my hitting tips for MLB The Show 21. Hopefully, by the end of this video, I can give you at least one thing that's going to improve your hitting in MLB The Show 21. My goal is just basically to make you a better hitter, and hopefully there's just something that you can take away from this video that's going to help you out in some form or fashion. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at my settings. Now, I don't want you to pay attention too much to how well I hit in this video. I might hit grades. I might not hit that great. That's not really what's important here. What's important here is I want you to take away the lessons that I'm going to teach you in this video, the principles, the thought processes. That's what I want you to take away from this video. I'm just going to hit in this video so that I can maybe explain them a little bit better and just give you something to watch while we go through this tutorial. So let's talk about my hitting view and why I chose this hitting view. So I choose strike zone for my hitting view and there's a very specific reason that I choose this view. First of all, the baseball, the pixel size of the baseball is going to be as large as possible from this view and you want that. You don't want the baseball looking very small when it's coming towards you as you're hitting. You want as many pixels as possible. So that's why I'm gonna go with strike zone view and let me show you what I mean by that. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at a couple views. So if I go from strike zone view here, you can see the picture looks, you know, it's the picture is very easy to see. The ball coming out of hand is very easy to see and you're able to drive it back up the middle for a base hit. But if we go into the gameplay options and let's say we select something like fisheye here, uh, which I believe is the standard mode that the game comes on. See how much smaller this indicator is and watch the pitch come in here. The baseball itself, it's just much, much more difficult to see than in strike zone view. So that is why strike zone view, while it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world, it's definitely the best one to use. If you don't like strike zone, try strike zone two or try strike zone high. Those are your better options. It's also gonna give you that feel at the plate like you're actually at the plate IRL in real life. It's going to give you that kind of feel. And that's why strike zone is so important. Now, uh, the in-play view offense, I just go with medium. Hitting interface, we're gonna go with zone. We're going to go with buttons for our input type. We gotta have the PCI on because we want our aimer on. We're gonna go with diamonds. We're gonna go with wedge. We're gonna go none on the outer. We're gonna go with spring, spring green. We're going to go with 100% transparency. You can lower this, you can make this higher. And then we're gonna fade the inner and the outer. So let me explain why we're gonna do all this. So the diamonds, we want that we want that aimer to be as small as possible. Think like an FPS, we want that aimer to be as small as possible. We wanna see the wedge so we can kinda of see our contact area. Uh, we wanna see that before the pitch, it's gonna help us tell us like what difficulty that we're playing on. If we're playing online, it's gonna give us a general idea of our contact area, but we want that to fade away we're gonna have outer on none and we're gonna fade the inner and the outer. We want that to fade away so we can just focus solely on the diamonds themselves. Now the color, you can use whatever color that you like. Some people like to use white. It doesn't, you know, some people like to use yellow. I personally like the, the spring green. You can choose whatever color you like. The diamonds and the circles, they're not too much different. I just personally prefer the diamonds. So when we apply the changes here and we go back in, you can see that's kind of our contact there. You can see that on the bottom left, that's basically what that yellow is representing down there. And we're basically only going to look at the dots. That outside zone is gonna fade away so we can hone in specifically on the dots themselves. Now the first thing you gotta do too is you gotta watch the pitcher and you wanna pick up his release point of when he releases the ball. So what you're gonna pick up is the pitcher is gonna wind up and every pitcher gets to a certain spot where their wrist is like, you know, kind of by their ear, or maybe they're sub submarine style or sidearm style, but you're gonna wanna pick up that release point. If you can pick up that release point, that's where you wanna take your eyes and start to try to decipher what kind of pitch it is. This is the most important thing to do to start to pick up the pitch, to see if it's a fastball, a slider, a curveball, a changeup. That's where you want your eyes to go. You know, Relax your eyes as the pitcher is getting ready to throw, then pick up that release point and focus in on that release point. Now, another tip that I can give you is get ahead in the count. Getting ahead in the count is very beneficial. Somebody like Mike Trout, like Mike Trout very often, he takes the first pitch of an at-bat. If you can get ahead in the at-bat, you're off to a big time start. Like if you can get to a 2-0 count, now they kind of got to groove it in there. Like you don't want to be chasing pitches. You don't necessarily want to be swinging at the first pitch. 
You want to be very patient and get your pitch. And the more balls that you can accumulate in a count, the more chances you're going to have. At, you know, Basically, if they're 2-0, and they're 3-0. and they got to start throwing it in the zone. And that's when you can expect them to throw it in the zone. You can expect more fastballs for them to be throwing in the zone because they can't just walk you over and over. That's not good. It's also going to get the pitcher's confidence on his pitches down. It's going to make it harder for him to pitch when his pitch confidence uh, goes down. Now, the next tip that I have for you is to move the PCI very slightly. We don't have any sensitivity on the pitch, uh, on the PCI itself. This aimer right here, it doesn't have any sensitivity setting. So I think the sensitivity of it is actually pretty high just in general. So you want to use real slight movement. So if it was on like a one to 10 scale, the sensitivity of the PCI, I would say it's on like an eight or a nine. And you obviously, we, we don't have a setting yet uh, to be able to change that. So just keep that in mind. It's not really like a three or a four. It's more like a seven or an eight or possibly a nine on a scale of like one to 10. So this thing's pretty sensitive. So don't try to make some crazy movements. If you find yourself making like big movements with the left stick, you're probably about to swing at something outside the zone and pitches outside the zone while you can hit them it's not going to be the same as hitting a pitch down the middle you're going to drive pitches down the middle a lot better so just try to make real small movements as you aim the pci now the next tip i have for you is to focus on the dots themselves try not to look too much at your swing now throughout the year i'll be giving you you know tips on my channel of who the best cards are to use, who has like the quote unquote good swings. But what's more important than anything else is getting the dots on the ball, regardless of what the swing is. Focus on aiming these dots at the ball. You will have a ton of success. Focus on the ball out of the release point, aim the dots and swing the bat for the best results. I, I can't tell you how, how important it is to focus on the dots and just aim the dots at the ball. I know that sounds really, really simple, but don't try to look too much at the swing. The swing you're just going to feel naturally in your peripheral vision. It's not as important as, you know, looking, you know, at the batter. It's all about moving the PCI to the ball. Now, where do I like to start the PCI pre-pitch? I kind of like to start it in the middle. I might do a little bit of moving it around just to keep my thumb loose. It's not too important. I kind of like to start it in the middle, and I'll tell you why I like to start it in the middle. I like to start in the middle so I can reach anywhere with the aimer possible. I don't want to cheat over to the left because then I can't get to the right. I don't want to cheat to the right because I can't get it over to the left. Uh, especially, you know, left on left, right on right. We'll talk about that more in our pitching tutorial, how people are going to pitch you. I suggest watching that video too, just because then when you're hitting, you're going to know how like more elite pitchers are going to try to pitch you. Like if, if you're really just getting into baseball too, you know, it's going to, it's going to help you know the minutia of like, you know, baseball meta. You know what I mean? All right. So our next, uh, our next focus is we're going to try to take away the inside part of the plate. Now, if your bat is really, really late and you can't pick up the ball out of the hand and you can't pick up pitches on the inside, you're going to have a lot of trouble. If anything, you want to be more early with your swing rather than late so you can take away the inside half. If I'm a pitcher and I can just pitch you inside the whole time and you can't react fast enough to it, you can't like aim the dots on the inside half fast, that's going to be a real problem because now you're just going to have, you're going to be late and you're going to hit it with weak contact to the other side and you're never going to really pull the ball. So you want to kind of be in that pull the ball mentality in this game. Uh, so it's like a little bit different than real life, but you want to be in that pull the ball mentality in this and take away the inside half always kind of be looking for an inside fastball if you can take away the inside half you're going to be really really difficult to pitch to because now they got to kind of pitch you away and when they pitch you away you have more time to react to it than if you do on a pitch on the inside so you really want to have a fast bat as much as possible now this next tip i'm going to give you and i feel like nobody is doing this but this is what i've been doing you have not noticed this 
at all throughout the video because no way, <laughs> there's no way you could have possibly known. There's three different ways that you can swing, and I apologize, I don't know the Xbox buttons. I, I love everybody on Xbox. I gotta say, Xbox people, you're the best. PlayStation people, I love you as well. But I just have the PlayStation controller, so I'm gonna put it up on the screen now, and we can kinda talk about it. So for example, you have the power swing with square, you have the X swing, which is normal, and you have the circle swing, which is contact. You never need to use the power swing and you never need to use the contact swing. I'll explain how they work, but especially you never need to use the contact swing. The contact swing is going to make that aimer. It's going to make it bigger, but it's not going to give you the type of hits that you want. I would really recommend not using that. The square button is going to make it smaller. It's not going to make it smaller on the screen, but in the feedback in the bottom left, if you've been watching this video, maybe rewind it for a second, you'll see the feedback on the bottom left. It's going to make it smaller. It's going to give you a smaller window to be able to put the dot on the ball. And so I just really wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend always, always, I don't care who's up. I don't care what kind of hitter it is. Use the X button for the normal swing. But here's where we're going to take it to the next level. So what I do is I actually go into, I'm gonna go into the PlayStation itself and I'm gonna explain something that I do. So I go to the, let's go to the homepage and let's go over to the settings. Uh, what I do is this, is I go into the settings, I go into accessibility, I go into controllers and for the sake of this, let's turn these off and um, I'll reset this. So let's reset the custom button assignments. So what I do, this is your base controller, we'll click apply. What I do is I actually switch my X button with my R2 button. And the reason that I do that is I feel like I react with my index finger on my right hand faster than I react with the X button. And like I told you, you don't need to ever power swing, you don't need to ever contact swing. All you need to do is X swing. So you can switch this when you go back to fielding and because you're, you know, you're in a, throwing home is you hit the X button to throw home. You hit the X button to select those pitches. What you got to do if you want to use these settings is either turn this off when you go out in the field or do what I've been doing the last like couple weeks of MLB The Show 20. And that's just getting used to throwing home with R2, getting used to selecting that pitch with R2. If you select R1, you could try R1. The thing is your return all runners is R1. So that kind of is a little bit more difficult. You also got to remember when you're base running if you want to send somebody home you're going to select them and then hit r2 to send them home so basically what we're going to do is we're going to click the x button and we're going to go to r2 and we're going to hit apply so now our x button is going to be r2 and i just really really like that a lot i feel like it gives me a quicker bat and remember i was telling you that's really really important to have a quick bat and it just makes it feel more like an fps now i'm just aiming i hit r2 we got a perfect perfect there that's one tip that i i just feel like that a lot not a lot of people know about yet but i'm telling you i was winning a ton of games in mlb the show 21 at the end i'm super super comfortable with it it's made my bat faster it just made me I feel like it's a, just all around uh, a lot better to use, especially on the PS5. It feels great on the PS5. So one other thing we got to talk about also, if you're going to use the R2 method instead of X, is you need to switch this setting as well before I forget to talk about this. Go into your settings, go into the accessibility, go to controllers, and go to the vibration intensity and make sure you turn that off. If you leave it on, it's going to do the haptic stuff, which if you want the haptic stuff, I wouldn't recommend using R2. Um, I personally like to have the haptic stuff off. I don't, I don't like the vibration and especially to use R2, just make sure the vibration intensity is off. That's really, really important. Now, some people as well, they also, instead of using Bluetooth, if you go to use USB cable, it's supposed to make the delay not as bad. This is probably more of a competitive setting. I like to use my controller wirelessly just for comfort. So I use Bluetooth. You won't be able to use Bluetooth wirelessly if you have this set. So I like to use Bluetooth, but just another thing that you can try to make your timing a little bit faster, reduce your input delay. So another really important thing is making sure you have a fresh controller. Uh, your left stick can, tr you know, after time, it's just going to get some drift. It's going to get some wear and tear on it. It's going to make it a lot more difficult to aim the PCI. So I recommend getting a new controller. 
Um, I'm partnered with GameStop. Uh, what I love about GameStop is I'm able to buy, I, I was able to buy the controller, the PS5 controller with the uh, warranty plan. And when you buy with the warranty plan for a little bit more money, they're really, really friendly about it. If you have any problems with your controller at all, you can take it in. And when you take it in, just be like, I'm having stick drift. You know, if, if your controller is getting messed up, take it in, take the little code that they give you to take it in. You'll be able to get a brand new controller and you can always rebuy the code package for like 10 bucks. So you almost always can have a good working controller. That's really, really important. Uh, the other thing a lot of people like to use are these uh, control freaks. Now, I personally like to use uh, the ones that kind of have that divot in them so you can place your thumb in them. And I also like the low rise ones. I don't like to use the, the higher ones because I will knock them off the controller. Plus, I don't really like how they feel, but I like how these smaller ones feel. I recommend the Omni ones. That's the ones I like the most because you, your thumb fits nicely in that. If you have like bigger hands, I have bigger hands. So my thumb, it just gives me more like circumference area to place my thumb on the sticks. I feel like I have more control with them. I like them a lot. So check out this, the low rise Omni ones too. That's going to help you out. And the last thing that can help you out quite a bit is if you pick up a gaming monitor, that's going to help you out quite a bit too. Uh, TVs are getting better and better to play on, but you do, if you really want to like really compete, I mean, you're probably going to want to invest in a gaming monitor. It's going to be great for all the games that you play, but look for something that has, uh, you know, over 120 like Hertz basically is good. And you want the milliseconds of lag time to be as close to one as possible. Uh, so if you do want to invest in a gaming monitor, just come into my Twitch chat or something like that. Uh, I can send you a link for like the one that I use. Um, I might upgrade mine here eventually, but a gaming monitor really helps out uh, with hitting. So, Hopefully in this video, I'm telling you, maybe there's one thing that you took from it. You know, maybe try out the R2. That's what I'm going to be using this year. I know it's a little bit unconventional, but that's what I personally like to use. Let me know if you tried that out and it works out for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'll try to get to those questions the best that I can. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.